Hello everyone, wherever you are watching, welcome to Nigeria Decides on Independent Television. This beautiful and lovely Tuesday, uh, we're glad to bring this show your way. And uh, we hope you're excited to be with us as well, because this is a partnership, a partnership that works, because without you on the other side, uh, whatever we do here would just be empty. Today on the show, we continue our conversations in the build up to Saturday's governorship and State House of Assembly elections across the country. A lot of lessons to learn from the 25th of February uh, presidential and national assembly election. Now we're cascading to the governorship and State House of Assembly election. Uh, we'll be giving you a review of that in our opening, uh, in the opening part of the show. My name is Sonny Duke Okosun. Also with me is my colleague, Philip Omogupon. Philip, good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning, Sonny Duke, and good morning to our beautiful viewers. Okay. Um, the, the, someone told me this morning, jokingly, and, and, and I started reflecting on it. Say, you say you're saying you say Nigeria decides. Uh, last Saturday, did Nigerians actually decide, or it was... Um, the umpire that decided. <laughs> well, it, it got me thinking. Can you imagine that? It got me thinking. And uh, one of our one of our staff here, who was you know putting this place together, uh, by name Stanley, you know, just just said that out, and I and I started giving him some 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 thoughts, you know, in a sense that look, there's a lot of sense in what the guy said. Yes, uh, if, if if you look at it critically, you will say that uh, we need to salute the resilience of the youths. I see the youths as the heroes in this uh, previous election, in the presidential election, okay. and that of National Assembly, uh, because they came out and they made sure that they uh, took a decision mm. in terms of uh, their numbers. And uh, if you ask me, looking at the issues about uh, if really their votes counted, mm. well, it, it trickles down to the emergence of a third political party. You know, if we look at the National Assembly, you know, we're going to be having uh, a new look of uh, uh, members, you know, who, will, who, will, who have been fed into the National Assembly. We could count and we see that since 1999, yeah. you know, elections, uh, we've not really had it this way, where the youths came out and decided yeah. that they want to make sure that there's a turnaround in the political space as mm. per mm. the candidates that have been fed in. Yeah. We have, for instance, the Labour Party, yeah. in the first instance, having six senatorial seats. That has never happened. Never happened. <laughs> and uh, we had in the House of Rep, they had 34 seats. And also the SDP had their numbers also, and uh, the uh, NNPP. Now, this election happens to be uh, a first of its kind since 1999 where we had, you know, uh, three heavyweights coming out for yeah. the election, yeah. you know, like uh, the candidate of the APC and, of course, the PDP and, uh, and, and Labour Party. And, of now. course, NNPP. And yeah. NNPP, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. four heavyweights. Because, because you four heavyweights. You need to look at what NNPP did in Kano State. Of course, and took so over this. That tells you that is a strong force. Yes. And going into the governorship election and State House of Assembly election, um, it, it's, it's going to be... Uh, a major upset in that state. Yes. Because when you look at the results from the presidential and national assembly election, that's the reason why some state governors, especially for states that lost, they're a bit concerned that there could be a bad one going effect in the governorship and even in the state houses of assembly election. <laughs> and so they are working around the clock they are turning from side to side on their beds <laughs> when they sleep at night. They are really, really bothered about what could possibly be the outcome of the governorship and the State House of Assembly election. What if those who voted in the presidential and national assembly election, they decide to go the way they did in that election in the governorship and state house of assembly, what will yeah. become our fate? So it's a very, very interesting scenario that is uh, Yes, out. of course. And I think it's a welcome development it because uh, the youths, or let's say the electorate in this uh, great dispensation, are, are saying that they want to reward efficiency mm. and they want to ensure that they shut down you know, parties that are perceived as inefficient yeah. and also reward excellence and, of course, reprimand inefficiency. Yeah. Uh, we saw that played out. but. Some candidates, you know, who couldn't win 
uh, their positions or the uh, offices that they've gone for, you know. Uh, it's not as if the candidates were not fantastic. Yeah. They were fantastic in their various capacities, but it is just that the, the scene of the party, you know, <laughs> <laughs> seems to be visited, you know, by the anger of the electorate. I think it's a beautiful development. Uh, you know, to politicians, there's a big lesson to learn. A that huge, a huge it's lesson. no longer business as, as usual. usual yeah. And nothing stays permanent. If we, if we continue in this light, uh, we're going to have more credible, yes. responsible people in position of authority, especially for elective position. That's very key. Mm. And then we'll be able to hold those we elect accountable. Accountable. Because they know that they didn't get that position based on their monies, based on their political influence, and all of those influences. But the people chose you. So you are accountable and responsible to the people. Mm. Until we get to that point where politicians know that they are responsible and accountable to the people, we will not get it right. Yes, of course. There are instances where we've seen some very harsh policies, obnoxious policies, nonsensical policies, policies that will not affect the life of the average man. I mean, we saw the Naira swap deal, for example, how it has popularized a lot of people, even though the intention, according to those in authority, has to do with avoiding vote buying and all of that. It was like a charade. The people felt the brunt of that policy, and they are yet to recover from it. You know, when we were uh, walking, uh, uh, you know, turning closely, inching closely to the presidential and national assembly elections, you know, you were talking about the issues that, in, that could influence the elections. Yeah. <laughs> now, the excruciating moment, yeah. you know, the hardship on the electorate, just as we gradually came close to the presidential election, you know, also made them to extend their frustration, you know, turning their frustration into victories on their ballot okay. to make sure that their votes count. Yeah. Now, the people are already expressing pain over these obnoxious policies, like you mentioned. And it's no longer business as usual because the politicians or any uh, government, you know, that will be emanating from this uh, recent election mm. would have to sit tight, seriously, drive behind the wheels mm. and make sure that the figures are up. Absolutely. Because there's another, there's another, you know, pragmatic move that the youths or the electorate could be bringing this time. Uh, we may not have the usual, you know, uh, uh, two terms, yeah. two terms coming up, yeah. like you did the first term and yeah. then you are about to go on the, for, on, on the second term and you expect that you win. It may not be like that. You know, the, you will be appraised, the political dispensation, the administration will be appraised by what it's able to do in the first four years. And if they are not able to do something uh, as uh, tidy as expected by the electorate, they'll be kicked out. Absolutely. That's where we're going. Absolutely. Now, we are having a dynamic. They say the society is dynamic. Absolutely. But uh, sometimes we read it on the books, but we hardly could tell that it could be as pragmatic mm. as what we're seeing now. Mm. Now, there's so much hunger in the land. You know, the people have been, you know, uh, 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 they, they've been brutalized by poverty. Yeah. And so they are singing a new song that no longer will they continue in that level. Now, Absolutely. if you could see the political participation, you know, it, it wows me. Mm. I, I was looking at reports and trying to look at the indices, trying to look at the numbers. We have about 6.9 uh, voters, you know, for Lagos State. Mm. And in spite of the violence, though, the number was greatly reduced, yeah. you know, in spite of the violence, those who wanted to make uh, their voice, uh, you know, count, make their votes count, yeah. they still came out. Absolutely. And you could see from the 6.9, though, we had about 1.3, you know, that came out for the election. Mm. And they also decided, you know, they also made their votes count in the decision they took yeah. to show that, well, uh, no matter what, if you think that you are, are the godfather of a particular state, it will no longer be so. Mm. It was won by yeah. the Labour Party. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, we, so that's, we look that's, at other states. Yeah, that's really, even at those states, for instance. Yes. You know, the violence that took place in all of these uh, states. Yeah. Yeah. Ekiti, Ondo, it, it, it didn't change Kogi, the It didn't outcome. change the, the outcome. In, in Lagos right now, yeah. um, what has happened in the presidential election is really influencing 
uh, the conversation. The popularity of the Labour Party candidate is rising. And uh, there was a conversation recently about his um, ethnic background. Some said, oh, he's partly Igbo and he's partly Yoruba. Uh, he's married to a Yoruba man, I mean, a Yoruba woman, yeah. as, it, as it were. And then references were also meant, um, made to uh, uh, the fact that even the APC candidate, for example, in Lagos State, uh, originally is not from that state. Okay. So what is now the basis of bringing ethnic sentiments into politics? Let the best man do the job, irrespective of his religion, his tribe, mm. his uh, background, and what have you. So long as such a person has the capacity to do the job, he should be given the chance. Yes, of course. And about 28 governors will... Um, 28, 28 governorship elections is, is going to be taking place this Saturday. this Saturday. And the outcome of the presidential election, I can tell you for sure, is going to have a major influence Impact. in that election. Yes, of course. Uh, whether on the positive or, or on the, the negative, negative, it depends on how the people respond to it. Because we've seen over the years, uh, the total number of registered voters in the general election is about 82 million, according to INEC figures. Yes, of course. But if you look at the total number of people that actually came out yes. for the presidential and national assembly election, um, it's just a little bit over 20 million. Yes. That's very disappointing. Very disappointing. Very disappointing. Mm. Uh, that's, uh, when, when you look at the margin, we're talking about maybe over 40 million people or, uh, yeah, over 50 million people didn't come out to vote. Well, we can't say they didn't come out to vote. Yes. <laughs> because... No, what, we, we can what, say, what transpired? No, what transpired, no, actually? About what transpired. The violence. No, hold on. The we, violence we can didn't, say, we didn't can allow them to exercise their no, franchise. No, hold on, hold on. We can say they didn't come out to vote because even if violence was a factor, you can't tell me that it was because of violence that we're having the number within the region of about 30 million. When we have 82 million people registered. Well. Yeah, you, you get what I'm saying? I get, I get so violence will not be so much so that uh, over 10 million people didn't vote. No. The, the, there, there have been some questions about whatever result INEC declared yeah. that even made one of my colleagues here, Stanley, to say, look, why say Nigeria decides? Why not just say INEC decides? Uh, but that's a matter for another day. On, on a large scale, you can even cascade it to a those state. I'm sure in a those state, um, the total number of registered voters uh, it should be over 2 million. Oh, yes. That about. Yes. But I'm not but sure the that, that, came in. that came out to <laughs> cast that vote uh, is up to about 1 million or 1.5. Mm. This is exactly what we're talking about. And if we now blame it on violence and all of that, that's begging the question or begging the issue. Yes. The, the level of voter apathy in Nigeria is a huge problem. And it's also the reason why many, t many, t many times you find that those who want to rig elections have the opportunity to rig because they have the room you've been looking at yes, the numbers because when that you go come to out. a polling unit yes you they have the room to manipulate 500 uh, voters there or perhaps have a disposition to a particular party you'll be scared to go there mm. because you know by the time such a crowd have a bridge have a wall against you trying to snatch a ballot box or stuff like that you can't escape it yeah. they will lynch you there and then we need to have that is why people have also talked about exploring other ways and means of voting like electronic voting of course but again the question arises um, are we right for that are we right for that and, and, do we have the technological and, and could strength the political to be able to do class that? yes could the political class allow it to thrive that's a big question <laughs> because a lot happened a lot transpired mm. in the previous election yes. the presidential and the national assembly yes. elections now, if uh, the electoral umpire made so much promises, you know, about ensuring that the elections will be credible and hinging it on having the beavers work effectively to the point where we'll have uh, immediate electronic transmission of results from the polling unit to the INEX server, yeah. you know, the otherwise came up. Yeah. Now, a lot. I wouldn't want to go back to what transpired anyways, yeah. but yeah, it's quite, it's all, quite of this, all of this, all of this seems to uh, bring uh, mind-boggling questions to the mind, you know, about the credibility of the elections. Mm. Now, a little, we could say, the eyes could see, yeah. you know, from a distance, yeah. you know, and all of this transparency would have been tackled if the electronic transmission of results 
uh, really uh, took uh, emergence. Mm -hmm. to but we, did, stage, but we didn't see that. Yeah. We didn't see that. I think that's a big lesson for the electoral umpire under the watch of Professor Mahmoud Yakobo. Mm. And what is going to be happening in this Saturday election? I, I, I think um, it should step on his game. It should ensure that it, it does the needful in order for it not to be seen on a bad spot. Yeah, because for, for the to, to whom much is given, much, much is, is expected. expected. Absolutely. You know, I agree with you because um, fortunately and unfortunately, we've seen beavers work perfectly, effectively, efficiently <laughs> in governorship elections. Yes. Effectively. I mean, so effective that everyone started talking about it as... Um, the new elixir for our electoral process. Isn't that because it was the off-cycle state elections? Well, Isn't that because it well, wasn't on a large scale? INEC has that, uh, INEC should answer Nigerians on that. But the uh, impact of Beavers in some of these off-cycle elections brought a bit of uh, credibility into the processes and gave us reasons to believe that this is really the elixir for electoral process. And I believe that even increased the numbers of those Absolutely. who registered to ensure Absolutely. that their votes count because yes. they saw the, uh, you know, the development as yes. a way of yes. you know, making a that, transparent that polls possible. That conviction was there yes. based on all of these uh, feedback. But, but what went wrong? You know, Nigerians are still asking questions. Yes, and, and those questions are being answered by scientists, by technologists, <laughs> by those who are in the know. Yes. I need to explain why on election day the server you know wasn't accessible. Well uh, went we need, down. We need we need yes. to see because uh, yes. like like we have reports. Because where, on that day the, 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 the polling the, units, I mean polling officers or electoral officers yeah. made several attempts to send and they couldn't access the server. But for National Assembly election, the server was accessible. Yeah. In some polling units, um, what some of the electoral officers did you know, they had to send, give the impression to the polling agents that they were actually sending to the server <laughs> to let them off the hook. And immediately they left there, they collected those results manually, which was something, you know, what, what bothers me the most about this whole conversation is the fact that November 2022, the INEC chairman denied a media report. I'm sure that story must have been a scoop. Okay. It must have been a scoop. But he quelled that rumor, saying that Beavers has come to stay mm. and that Nigerians should disregard that rumor or that story that is the handiwork of mischief makers that wants to paint the organization in bad light. Mm. Well, there was it, it, even a press release to that effect by uh, Barrister Okoye, who is the um, INEC National Commission in charge of voter education and all of that. All of these things that I'm saying, they are there in the public space. Uh, yeah, yes. But, Fast forward to yeah. 2023. <laughs> but but we, can't, we can't really uh, hinge the blame solely or entirely on the electoral umpire under his watch. Okay, we'll blame you. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we'll blame you. There's something I want to bring out. There's something I want to bring out. Now, there are many factors that could play out. Yeah. We always say that INEC is independent, mm -hmm. but what percentage of independence mm -hmm. does it have? Yeah. What manipulations or what are the tendencies that uh, there could be? Philip, uh, let me tell you uh, something. You have a responsibility. You from have a, the political class. You have a responsibility. On the electoral umpire. We write, can't take that away. You have a responsibility to write your name in gold. In spite of the forces against Professor you? Humphrey, do you, do you do you understand that Professor Humphrey, do you understand that politicians Professor uh, Humphrey can't, Uwosu can't be played with? Was the INEC chairman as he then was during the 1993 presidential election? The option A4, he introduced it, and he ran it to logical conclusion. Even when the military uh, government of uh, President Ibrahim Babamasi Babangida, the first military president mm. in Nigeria, made effort to thwart that process. He went ahead with the results, declared the result, announced the result, and it was clear to everybody. It was audible to the deaf and visible to the blind that Chief M. Abiola won that election. Write your name in gold because posterity will always judge us. Yes. But and that's exactly what is happening to... Um, that's, you see, 
It's not just about the now. Whatever, what has happened now is something that will remain in our hearts and minds for a very long time to come. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. And this is very, very key. What I would like. You may say, okay, the influences of those in power, blah, 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 and stuff like that. Could be possible. Yeah, no, there is no doubt about that. But you had the opportunity to do what is right. Do what is right and damn the consequences. Okay, I think I think and think a lot here will also be tested when it comes to the Electoral Act. Yes. Twenty twenty two. Yes. And uh, what the provisions are like. Now, basically, uh, the court has given uh, absent a uh, uh, leave to um, the uh, Labour Party uh, presidential candidate and yeah. uh, its uh, PDP counterpart. Yeah. You know to uh, scrutinize the sensitive materials. Yeah. Used uh, during the election. Yeah. Again, we seem to uh, be waiting for what could be popping up from that. Okay, let's, let's, it's let's, on the crucible. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, much <laughs> later on the second half of the show. Uh, it's still Nigeria Decides on Independent Television. Beautiful Tuesday morning. We'll take a short break and then we'll get on course. Our first discussion segment, which is uh, 2023 Governorship and State House of Assembly election achieving violence-free pools. Stay with us. We'll be back with you in a moment. <laughs> 